Hey there, I'm Chef Michael Montgomery from Culinary School of the Rockies in Boulder, Colorado. Today, I'm here to show you how to make one of the most simple, basic, perfect fall wintertime treats for the table, and it's just a buttermilk biscuit. The reason I say I think it's so perfect is it's incredibly versatile what you can do with these little biscuits. You can just go as far as, and it's not very far at all, taking them right off the cookie sheet and eating them warm, and that's good enough for me. You can split them open, make sandwiches with them. You can serve them open-faced, close little sandwiches. A lot of people like biscuits and gravy. You can use them um, with some fruit and some cream or as a dessert. So this should be a really basic recipe for you to do a lot with. Um, I've got all the ingredients in front of me, so it's really quite simple. I am intentionally going to work on this piece of cool stone because we're working with cold butter and the butter really needs to remain cold and it'll actually um, do a much nicer job on the stone versus the wood that's surrounding. So if you have a slab of stone at home or many of you actually have marble counters, things like that, it's really ideal in this case. And you can think about biscuits just like you think about pie crust, exactly the same. So a pat sucre, a basic pie crust, it is essentially the same thing, just a thinner version. Biscuits is just a fat old um, pie crust. What we want to make sure we're doing is keeping the butter cold. That butter, when it goes into the oven, will start to steam because of the moisture in that cold little bit of butter. That steam is going to lift the layers of the flour and give those biscuits that really wonderful, flaky consistency that I certainly desire in a biscuit. And a crust. Let's start. I have all-purpose flour here, um, meaning it's right in the middle of the spectrum of protein content. So basically all flour, if it just says flour in a recipe, you're gonna go all-purpose flour, and that's what many of you have at home in your pantries. Um, I've got my all-purpose flour in a pretty deep bowl. We're making a very small batch here. Um, this is only gonna yield about six biscuits. I actually prefer a small batch, um, just because you don't have to work the dough as much. If you work the dough, you all know what the result of that is. It's not gonna be a tender, flaky biscuit. It's gonna be a little more tough and um, not quite as pleasant. We've got our flour in the bowl, one and a half cups. I have one tablespoon of sugar. You can keep the sugar out. This will give the biscuit, obviously, a slight, slight sweet flavor. Keep the sugar out if you're not looking for that. Baking powder is important. One and a half um, teaspoons, let me check my uh, notes. One and a half teaspoons of baking powder. Second leavening agent is baking soda and that's a quarter of a teaspoon, so much more baking powder. I always put a pinch of salt in myself, even if it's not in the recipe, I think it's important. And I'm gonna whisk this. This is where a lot of recipes would say sift, or sift twice. I don't really find it necessary, certainly here in Colorado, because the flour is pretty dry. It's not lumpy. The flour does remain quite light. Unless you notice you have lumps in your flour, or your flour's been packed down into a bag or a container, Sift it, otherwise this does a really nice job. Going pretty aggressively, trying not to lose too much. And I can see it's doing a nice job of lightening as well as incorporating all those ingredients. Done with the whisk, put it away. No more whisking in this case. What I have waiting for me in this fridge is some cold cubed butter. And we're using half a stick. I need to double check my notes again. Half a stick of cold cube butter, which is a quarter of a cup. I'm gonna dump it all in. I have it pretty small, so I cube it, or dice it, and then I throw it in the refrigerator so these cubes set up and get nice and cold. It's all gonna go in at one time. Make sure you get it all in there. I like to use my fingertips initially. It's gonna provide just a little bit of heat and get that butter working in with the flour. So I'm gonna switch from my fingertips in just a moment and go to a pastry blender or a fork and cut the rest of the butter in. And what we're looking to achieve here, coarse meal, a lot, a lot of recipes will say that, pea-sized bits, you wanna go slightly smaller than a pea. These are really handy. What this is doing is, has several blades working to break that butter down or cut it up and incorporate it with the flour and the other ingredients. Like I said before, it's really important to keep this cold and to keep it in bits because those bits provide steam, which gives us that flake. It's the first thing I do with a biscuit 
let it cool a little bit, even though it's hard to do, I want to grab it right out of the oven. Let it cool, and then I take the top, and I just lift the top off to see what it looks like beneath the top. If you've done a really good job, you get big old flakes, so you can almost see the layers. That's a really nice biscuit. So this pastry blender is doing a really nice job of breaking things down for me. As you can see, I'm shooting a little bit of flour out onto my piece of stone here. That's okay, because I'm gonna do a little kneading on that stone. I'll pick it all up in just a minute. Just try not to throw so much that you're uh, hitting the floor. Whoops, like I just did. Now I have buttermilk. You could use straight up milk. I prefer buttermilk. Some people use cream. You want it to be rich. Obviously, cream's gonna give you a little more fat. Um, buttermilk has very low fat. I like the tang, it provides more, more than anything else. The acidity of the buttermilk is really nice. So this is about three quarters of a cup of buttermilk. I have a cup measured, because I really don't know how much I'm going to need. I'm gonna switch over to a wooden spoon, and uh, I'm gonna mix this, trying not to mix too aggressively, because I'm gonna do most of the work with my hands, dump it out of the bowl. I'm gonna mix this just until it looks like it's starting to pull together into you know, larger pieces. It probably will not come into one mass, but it will start to clump together, and that's what we need. Try to reserve a little bit of your buttermilk, milk, cream, so you can brush the tops of the biscuits before they go in the oven. It gives them that really pretty little shine, um, which I think is important, so I always reserve a bit and we'll do that last. So this feels quite nice. It should be pretty tacky, uh, sticky, sticking to your hands. If it's not sticking to your hands at this point in time, um, it's, you don't have enough moisture. So just go ahead, add more liquid, whatever you're using, until it's actually sticking to your hands, and then dump it out and begin the kneading process. You want your biscuits to actually be a little more sticky than a pie dough because we don't actually have to roll these out like you have to roll out a pie dough. We're just gonna form a mass with our hands and then we're just gonna stamp out some round biscuits. So what I'm doing here is picking up all of that flour that I shot out of the bowl, just rolling around my mass, and this is also gently kneading at the same time. And I'm saying gently knead. I am kneading just until I notice it's coming together and holding into one mass without too many cracks on the surface. I still should see those bits of butter I was talking about. Because remember, and I can't stress this enough, those bits of butter left in this dough are gonna give us that flakiness, which is really important. This is looking beautiful. I had a little extra flour here in case it was too sticky. I would have floured my surface. I didn't need to. We are in Colorado, keep that in mind. Keep the, all that excess flour out of the picture unless you really, really need it. We've come together in one nice mass. I didn't work it too much. The butter still is in bits. I have my biscuit cutter here. You could choose your biscuit size. Usually you buy these in a set. These are fun if you want to do some cool little hors d'oeuvres with biscuits, good size. Or if you're serving them with a stew, maybe you want to plunk it right down on the top of a stew. I'm going to do pretty much the standard size. I make my mass of dough just slightly um, less than how tall my cutter is. So you could do it about the same size. I'm just going slightly under the size of my cutter, and I'm just going to start punching these out. And I'm probably going to have a little stick on the counter. If you need to, you can get under there with a spatula. And I'm going to make sure I give my spatula a little bit of flour before I try to get this biscuit off. Beautiful. Still incredibly sticky, which is a really good sign. If it were dry, if it were in a dense little puck, you could think about it just like that, because it will be just like kind of eating a, a hockey puck. Onto my sheet pan with just a piece of parchment paper. You do not need any grease. I should have said this earlier. While you're doing this, have your oven preheating to 400 degrees. You want the oven hotter than the typical bake temperature. These are gonna bake only in about 10 to 12 minutes. So have your oven waiting for you. We're gonna go right in. No yeast is involved here, so we don't have any resting, we don't have any proofing, things like that. Um, these are really wonderfully fast. 
and they freeze beautifully, I should definitely say this, um, in this state. So if you want to make maybe a double batch, a triple batch, and freeze them, freeze them raw, individually first, put them in a Ziploc bag, and then bake them off from frozen until they're golden. Really simple. Always nice to have some frozen biscuits um, that didn't come from the grocery market shelf. I guess they'd be in the freezer. So I'm gently going to push this mass back together. I'm not really kneading at this stage because I do not want to overwork this, but I want to cut out a few more biscuits. So I'll just continue to gently press it back together. I'm going to give my cutter a little bit of flour. And at this point in time, I'm only probably going to get one at a time. My dough remains still quite tacky. So this gave me about, and these are a little larger, a little taller. Um, so this gave me five. The recipe probably should yield, you know, depending on the size, anywhere from five to six to eight if they're smaller. And then here I have this little scrap left. I'm just going to form it, and I'm going to make myself um, <laughs> a little treat to pull out of the oven early before the rest of the big biscuits are done. So it's just a little mini biscuit, but pay attention to it. It'll overcook. Last but not least, remember that little bit of buttermilk left on the top, little small pastry brush. I'm just going to brush the tops, give these biscuits a pretty little shine on the top. And then, like I said, 400 degrees. You could um, even 425 I see some people do. I prefer 400, depending on your oven. A lot of you know your oven at home. Hotter temperature is what we're looking for. Into our oven for about 10 to 15. It's probably somewhere in between, maybe like 12 minutes on these. Simple as that.